Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Semi Naked Speed here, and today we're gonna be doing an analysis of a little Witch Doctor gameplay. It's been a minute since I've done one of these. We're gonna be following a Crusader player. So without further ado, let's hop into it, kind of critique his general item build, skill build, uh, so on and so on. But the main thing I really wanna focus on is gameplay and then the item build. I really dislike what he goes this game. I'd kinda like to discuss it, talk about it, and really give my thoughts on how I think games and pubs typically play out, how you should generally optimize your items to give yourself the highest chance of winning in your average pub. Because look at this game. It's a 55 minute game and frankly, the story of pubs is kind of this. Basically, the average match, guys, is about 35 to 40 minutes. If you look at the duration here, 30 minutes, 32, 44, 33, 43, 44, a very short one at 28, but then we have 36, an hour, 35, it's very uncommon to see below 30. As we go further down, we have just about a 30 and then 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. You see the theme. There are very, very few games. The minority of games, I would say 10 to 20%, are around 25 to 30 minutes. The rest, the majority, are towards that 35, 40 minute mark. So what you want to tend to do is to have strategies that are good from the 25 to 40 minute mark. You wanna pick heroes that tend to scale and buy items that will come online and win that game uh, around that timing. Now, to be fair, right, if you buy too many greedy items and the only mentality you have is to scale, you fall into this problem where you don't buy any of the useful early game items, you lose all the early game fights, and by the time it hits minute 30, you're poor as hell. So you gotta find that clean balance and let's kind of talk about it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the GameLeap website where we're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. So one thing that I noticed about this Witch Doctor's gameplay that I absolutely love and I think is something that will help him get to higher ranks is his general aggression and his understanding of just kind of overall synergy. What he's really good about here is just kind of getting a good angle and executing. Now, to be fair, his execution is not that good. First things first, the execution here should have just immediately been an auto attack. I don't know why he's like walking so far down and to the left. Uh, it takes him quite a while to cask. cask. I, somehow he's ended up in the enemy creep wave. These are very 3k MMR things, so I'm not gonna lie. Maybe it's more of a 2k thing. I don't know. But I don't know how he got to here, okay? You want to be here, like, like here maybe here and clicking them. He should be clicking, clicking, clicking. Now what he does is pretty good, right? He stuns the techies, misses Maledict. But the thing is his general idea is good, right? Wrap when the Spear Breaker hits level two, cast your stun, cast your Maledict on the low HP target and get to work. But he didn't auto attack, he was out of position and then he missed Maledict. All right, from there, what I really dislike about his gameplay is his general item build. Uh, like he immediately goes boots, which is just bad, right? Like. He could be buying so many items to help him win this lane. Another Blood Grenade. Stick is quite good against Techie's Centaur, right? Um, and the fact that he even got that much gold, I guess... No, yeah, he didn't even get First Blood. So basically, he just wasn't buying any items. Guys, if you're trying to get to the next level, what you need to be doing is consistently spending your gold. Now, there are lanes where you want to rush boots. Very few as a support, though. Sometimes as a core, it makes sense if you want to chase people down or need to just disengage from like a Monkey King or something like that. But typically, this isn't the case. And so for the most part, you need to make sure you have resources. For instance, here, he barely can cast his spells. Yes, he has mangoes, but he only has about one set of spells here. And if he didn't pop a mango, he couldn't even do his combo. From there, he's not tanky, right? He has no fairy fire, no stick, right? No blood grenade to finish kills. He is almost out of HP regen. If the lane continues to progress and he trades auto attacks like he generally should, he will simply lose the trade over time. From there, I hate to be a hater, but he just has this... No offense to, to Cruz Lair, he has this problem where it just gets too close. Like, there's never a reason to be this close. Your hero's attack range is like this, okay? Everything you should do as a squishy range hero is max range. There are very few exceptions to this, okay? So when I see anyone get this close, I'm like, yeah, they're, they're just like average MMR. Because you, you can't, you can't do this. It's gonna get you killed, right? He's, why are you next to your Spear Breaker? You should never ever be allowing this easy of a blast off to initiate right and now it sets up for a two-man stomp he misses maledict again and i kind of know i mean he shouldn't miss but i kind of don't blame him because it's like now you're panicking you're getting two-man stun and then two-man stun and you know it's coming 
And it's, it's freaky, right? And so he kind of panics, misses his stuff, and he's going to end up obviously dying here. And it feels terrible, right? So do everything from max range and make sure you have items that allow you to take these fights. For instance, he could have raindrops and a stick right now, and then he would be very survivable and wouldn't even die there. But once again, to give him some credit, what a lot of players don't do, or they'll get afraid. They're like, oh, I just died, right? They'll stop getting aggressive. And what a lot of players don't do is they don't get aggressive. They don't get aggressive on their timing. And I like that he's very quick to counter initiate, right? He's, he's good about casting his spells. Now, here, kind of panicking a little bit. Once again, he should be trying to auto attack. But at the end of the day, he does hit the Maledict on the techies, which is the right idea. Just finish the easy kill. No need to get greedy and go for the Centaur. And he gets the job done, right? So pretty, pretty solid there. Also, I do want to mention, guys, before I continue, if you wanted this done privately for you, I do do that so you can message me over on Discord. And the other thing I want to say is that I want to do this for you guys for free over on YouTube as well. So comment down below. I need your match ID and the hero you played, and then you'll have a chance of just me doing one of these videos for you. So the next thing that I like that he does once again is he looks for these opportunities. Now, to be fair, he's very, very close minded, like he's not thinking about going top. But honestly, I don't mind it because TPing being top here and connecting to this fight just wouldn't make any sense. It would take way too long for him to get there. So it makes a lot more sense to honestly just continue to pick on Centaur. Something interesting about Witch Doctor as well is the fact that your your ulti, Death Ward, does not get blocked by Vanguard. So you're actually a direct counter to Vanguard heroes because Maledict completely destroys them and then death word completely destroys them so yeah you're a hard 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 counter to these types of heroes and so picking on them and ganking them specifically making that your decision is good now once again execution not bad uh it needs to be way 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 faster like nothing else to say it should be stun maledict ult like boom 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 right stun and then he just doesn't maledict he like steps forward i don't know why then he maledicts and then he hits which it's just bad, right? It needs to be boom, boom, boom. Spell, spell, spell. There's no need for autos when you're trying to kill someone with Death Ward. And so yeah, ends up getting the job done. Spear Breaker steals the kill because Malik certainly was going to kill this guy. <laughs> but whatever, it's good, right? They get the kill. From there though, something I would like to mention is I don't hate Malik against the enemy team comp. Um, if you're trying to kill Centaur or Earthshaker, maxing Malik is kind of good for that reason. However, one thing I really like about Witch Doctor right now is how broken the stun is. They've buffed this ability multiple times in a row. They buffed the cast point, they buffed the bounce speed. I think that was the main two. Basically, the ability actually bounces between people now. It's insanely stupid. And it's one of the best farming tools in all of Dota. It nearly clears an entire large camp. Certain large camps, it does kill the whole large camp. So what you do, and what I recommend you do on Witch Doctor in most games, is you max your stun, and then you max your heal. Right. Uh, I don't love Maledict in most games, but I think there's two routes. Either at level seven, have max stun and two points heal or max stun and then two points Maledict. I don't recommend going heal Maledict, essentially. I recommend going max stun and then uh, Maledict. Does he ends up going down here? Whatever. But yeah, I, I don't love this build because I think by maxing stun, you give yourself the ability to farm, which is really convenient if you're learning how to play the game at a high level, because honestly, I would say the lower you are, the easier it is to just click high level Maledict on someone and pray they die. But if you're trying to kind of mid-max and in between fights and in between smoke ganks and when your ulti is on cooldown, dropping stun on creep camps, it's really useful and it's great for defending towers too. All right, in this team fight here, he actually does an incredible job. We're skipping ahead to the 23 minute mark and the game is looking great. You can't imagine that a game where you're 15k ahead and minute 23 goes 55 minutes, but it's Dota 2 ranked matchmaking. No one knows how to properly execute the mid to late game. And as a result, the game will drag on. <laughs> but okay, a couple things to talk about. Number one, I actually think the best build on this hero is rushing Blink Dagger, especially if you're gonna go these items. The reason why, Maledict's cast range is horrible. And so if you wanna get off a good cask and you want to get off a good Maledict, you should go Blink. And the reason why Blink is particularly good in my opinion is then eventually it synergizes with your shard. The shard is one of the most broken ones in the game. It gives you a discount death ward, it does less damage, but it puts you in the ground and it, it kills people. Like you can solo kill heroes by blinking on them, stunning them, maledicting them and clicking shard. Either way in this team fight, I like what he does. I wish he would buy not uh, a point booster. I, I wish he would buy um, shard. It's just too good. It, this shard is too good not to buy. It's too, too good. But yeah, in this team fight here, good positioning. Instantly goes from the, in for the stun, which he was kind of doing before techie showed, which is a little bit suspect. I don't know. I guess it's kind of okay. Uh, but yeah, ends up being huge and oh yeah, that's some good stuff. And that Maledict hit the techies too, so very well positioned. His spell casting up until this point was not great, but that one was fantastic. All right, now upcoming here shows the main problem with his item build. Honestly, it's that and a little bit of positioning. As I mentioned before, the biggest problem with Witch Doctor is cast ranges. Maledict cast range sucks. The stun is bad. The ulti is bad. It's all bad cast range. 
right? The only spell that's decent is like it's kind of the stun and then maybe the ult. But the problem is if you just ult first, it's not with Malonic and it's not with your stun. And so you, you need a Blinker and Aether, in my opinion, on this hero. I really believe you need one or the other. Otherwise, it's just very hard to get value because you'll see in this team fight, like, okay, he runs down the middle, which first off, I hate. Right, try as the position 5 not to run up the middle unless you are about to guaranteed get your spell off. Okay, there, there was no one truly in sight. Maybe it was PL, but you can't reliably stun a PL as Witch Doctor. So he shouldn't try. Okay, he kites out way too far. He should be moving to here, move towards the action. He's going so far, should probably Glimmer Cape his, his Necrophos. Probably should have his heal on uh, before he went in. And then he should be moving to the right. He's going so far away. So far, literally taking a hiatus. Okay, then goes in. Steam's already fully dead because he doesn't have Blink, doesn't have Aether. It's hard for him to cast his spells. Yes, this go is very good on PL. Very, very good, right? Nice ulti. That PL is super, super dead to Malonic, I believe. Oh, oh. all right. This next, I'm about to show you guys like a minute straight. I'm sorry. This is kind of me making fun of him a little bit. <laughs> It's just funny. I don't. I'm telling you, you need to buy different items. I'm sorry to harp on it. First of all, guys, if you're this MMR, stop going high ground when you don't have an Aegis and you don't have a Siege Hero. Who's sieging? It's not Magnus. It's not this, like, not really defensive item build Necrophos. Even if he had a defensive item build, he doesn't do tower damage. It's not this Glass Cannon build. This guy's not even here. You can't go high ground. If you don't have a hero to go high ground, don't go high ground. Just keep farming. You can go high ground early if you have an Aegis on a Siege Hero. It can work, okay? But it typically won't. Try to tell your team who don't have that hero, farm and Roche. Sometimes you can't, they're gonna they're gonna be hard-headed, but at the end of the day, it is, you have to try to tell them. Okay, <laughs> what's funny here is he tries to place a ward on the hill, but he's clicking it too far away. You have to click way, way, way closer. He's clicking like here, you need to click here. That's the first thing. From there, if I play out the clip, you'll notice he's just gonna walk around in circles, not stunning anyone, not clicking Malik, not ulting. He can't use his shard because honestly, the shard, uh, it, it well, once again, it, it's Death Ward, but with, uh, you know, melee range, essentially. Um, so, yeah, he just kind of keeps walking around, like, looks to clear the bow wave, which is reasonable, but his team was going in, so he has to turn around, right? Should pop his mana boots for his Ember Spirit, because his Ember Spirit is out of mana, and popping the mana boots would have let him use his Remnant uh, to get him out of there. He tries to do a Chad TP, which does not work, so popping the mana boots would have saved him. Glimmering him might have saved him. Turning on heal would have helped a little bit, and this entire time, he literally can't gas his spells. <laughs> I wonder how often this happens. I, I have to imagine very frequently, because, like, th this is just a part of the hero, the bad cast ranges, and people go high ground all the time in these MMRs. That's why the games drag on, you know? So, if you solve this problem, guys, the 0 1v9s, because he bought Axe, which I like. You just need one of the other items that enables the Axe. This is insane. Use your shard. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. At this point, I would argue this is the most important point of the video, which is let your teammates die. Let them die and let them initiate. Do not, and this is kind of why I hate builds that focus on Maledic or like players that focus on it too much in the late game, because it just doesn't let you use your ult. It's too bad of a cast range and you will get stuck getting hit by Blast Off, Stomp, Echo, Muerta W. PL Ags bounces, you know, if he has Ags, he does, right? You're gonna get hit by a bunch of random crap. So even here, I hate this. How are you not afraid of getting echoed? He literally could kill their whole team if he was in position. Like literally, you could just team wipe them right now. <laughs> like, you don't go this close. I see this stuff and I'm like, oh my God, if this is a 10K MMR game, they are literally all dead already, right? <laughs> but okay, whatever, you live, you get off the hook. Then from there, what I don't love is that he goes on the PL. Right, you'll see in a second, he's gonna all in this PL. Now, Maledicting PL is very good because it tells you which one is real, right? So, like, you can argue that throwing out Maledict here is kind of okay, but he auto attacks, Maledict super late, and then proceeds to auto attack again and continue to stand still. If you guys want to get to 4, 5, 6k MMR, what you have to do is, as a support, instantly cast your spell from maximum range and then sprint backwards. This needs to be your intuition. If it's not, you will lose games because of it. I'm stressing this because it is super, super true. You will lose games. Now he gets hit by some random echo, doesn't glimmer, tries to ulti because he probably pre-casted it. I, I doubt he was trying to cast it there. Probably pre-clicked it, right? Needs the glimmer, can't get it off, not too surprisingly, uh, and gets stuck and dies. And now, arguably, your strongest hero is dead. 
right? Because this hero is insane at this point of the game. It is insane. Imagine he just let them go on his teammates and click Death Ward. It would have wiped the Shaker and the Techies like that. Now, I don't want to focus too much on wording or anything like that because it's just not, honestly, wording is something that I just don't believe is the main key of getting to high MMR until you're like, I would argue five, six K because people won't really play around the words. I don't think they get the best reads off the words. Yes, it is something to focus on. It's something to be aware of. Uh, it is something you need to improve on, right? Where to place words, at what point of the game, if you're winning, do I place lane words, hill words, whatever. But you'll notice this is just more important until you work this out and you are perfect. Every team fight, you are not getting caught. To be honest, guys, in two to three K MMR, unless they have like Night Stalker, you probably shouldn't be getting caught or like PA. Like first, I'm not saying not die. I'm not saying you will die if your team is weaker. I'm saying getting gone on early into the fight. That is a problem. Same thing here. This techies is dying. It is not your job to stun the guy getting gone on first. This is not what Witty does in the late game. Okay. He kites out. He should click his glimmer and run. Book it. Click the glimmer. Uh, he clicks the glimmer, clicks his shard, which in this case is the correct reaction. It does so much damage and he should instantly ulti here. It's taking him forever to do it. Um, and that ulti honestly would have nearly killed the PL. So... You don't want to get gone on though, because it forces you in situations like this. Imagine he had patience, and that was someone else getting gone on, and he just clicked his ult. He would have killed the PL, because this ability owns PL. It does pure damage, and it kills all the illusions. Witch Doctor is like a hard PL counter. It's insane how this matchup plays out. It's ridiculous, right? You, you completely counter the guy, but the fight was almost bad because he couldn't get off a good death ward. Fortunately, it worked out, but point being, if the enemy team is, is a bit better in executing, if they stomp him and burst him, the fight would have looked terrible. Now, a couple of last notes. I know I said I didn't want to focus on the wording too much, but in the late game, guys, if your team isn't smoking with you, just use the smokes to get up good wards and stay in position. Like, honestly, a lot of the time, I just understand your team won't listen. They won't do what you want. So as a support, I would be buying these two smokes in shop and using that to get up these four wards. I would go get a lane ward down bottom. I would get a Roche ward up, right? Wherever my team is running to to fight, I'm going to place a hill ward if I can, if it's safe. Okay, don't run ahead of your team to place a ward and die unless you see the enemy team on the other side of the map. You know what I mean? Like, be very careful about that. But like here, if he could walk up with this glimmer and place a hill ward, it'd be huge because they're going to be playing this area, right? This hill ward would be fantastic. Maybe a lane ward if he was smoked could be good, uh, especially during the nighttime. You really want these wards up. It's daytime now, but you get the point. Pretty key. Now in this team fight here, he actually does kind of cook. Once again, the spell casting is slow and inefficient, but it is the right idea. He clicks his glimmer, right? Goes for the stun, clicks Maledict. Um, clicks his ulti, and it just solo kills the PL, which is like, I mean, I don't know what this guy's doing. <laughs> Why is he using Doppel? But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned quite a couple of key things. I didn't want to make this video very focused on like some weird uh, advanced strategies. I want to make it focused on what is most important. If you are in Crusader or you're around Crusader, the things I'm talking about in today's video are key. Items, understanding the items that enable your hero, and then most importantly, fight execution. If you're executing the engagements in the laning stage and the engagements in the mid to late game wrong, that is the key things to getting to at least a four to five K level. When you get above that, then you have to start getting a lot more niche, like matchups and shit and like map movements and being very map aware and like getting down sneaky wards and like dewarding very cleanly and, you know, being extremely clean with all your stuff. But until you get towards that level, I would really focus on being super optimized with team fighting and, and fighting in general. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.